Okay, so given the numbers 3, 7, 9, and 2, we want to find the mean, median, mode, and range. So this is very important. This is like a basis, uh, basic statistical knowledge, all right? So everyone out there should should know this. And matter of fact, even if you're not really studying math, you know, like in real life, you know, these words always come up, you know, the median and the mean. Oftentimes people confuse these two a lot, but we hear this word a lot in the news, like median home prices in uh, this location is XYZ. They're using the word median, not mean or or uh, average. So we're going to talk about this here in a second, but these are just terms of knowledge that you just need to know, you know just like a percent, okay? Percent, you encounter this all the time, right? You, uh, you know, how much something is on sale for, or you look at your credit card statement, and you see the your APR, your interest rate. So there's a lot of mathematical concepts that we encounter like almost every day. And these topics, you know, are very, very important. Okay. You got to understand what they are. They're just going to make you more informed. But obviously, if you're taking a math class, you got to know what this is because this is really basic uh, statistics. And uh, uh, again, if you're taking any basic level uh, course, you know, this is the beginning of more of uh your study of statistics. And I'm going to talk about that here in a second. And obviously, I'm going to define specifically what the mean is, the median is, the mode is, and the range. And we're going to do this nice little basic prom because once you can do the basic proms, then, you know, you'll understand the procedure to do the more challenging problems. But this is a nice beginner prom here uh, to review and learn these terms. And we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I offer 100 plus different math courses. I have all the big courses like pre algebra, ge geometry, algebra 2, algebra 1, college algebra. I'm going to be launching pre calculus here soon. But I have a lot of specialty courses, uh, those courses that get you ready for a particular exam. Very, There's a lot of people studying math that aren't in a math class. They're studying math because they have to pass a very important exam, like the GED or the SAT or ACT or the Accuplacer, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam. Some of these are placement exams. They're not really pass-fail, but some of them are pass-fail. Okay, If you don't pass these exams, you don't get, like I say, a certification. And that's a big deal in people's lives. So uh, you don't have to be in a math course to be interested in studying mathematics. So um, anyways, I offer um, or have many, many uh, test prep products. Of course, you can just go to my site and check out my full catalog. And if I don't have um, what you're looking for, just drop me a line and I'll see what I can do for you. Now, I do have a lot of people like homeschoolers that use my program. So if you're somebody who needs to just learn independently a full complete course, I can help you out. And obviously I have people that are in a course already like algebra and they just need additional uh, help outside of the classroom. And obviously uh, my program can help you out. But if you want to help yourself out in mathematics, the best thing you could do immediately to start making a difference is to focus on your note taking. Okay, my golden rule of math I've developed over decades of te teaching this subject. It's like a law of the universe. And that is this. Those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very well in math. And the reverse is true. Okay, those students who just say like, eh, I'm not into note taking. I just don't do that. Okay, or I take notes every so often or I take very sloppy notes. I mean, I write stuff down in class, but when I go back and I look at my, my notes, I'm like, hmm, I don't even know what I wrote down. Listen, I, I was that person. Okay, I made tons of mistakes, all the mistakes that you made. And today it's even harder than when I went to school because you got these little devices called a smartphone, cell phones, which are completely distracting. Okay, um, so I get it. All right, most people, it's very difficult to remain focused. But if you can't stay focused when you're learning math, you're going to have a tough time. There's just too much information to learn. Okay, you have to stay focused and you got to put into work to uh, take math notes. And so when you have great notes, okay, that's a reflection of your focus and engagement. Okay, so you got to improve in your note taking. All right, but in the meantime, you need something to study from. So we offer, so I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's talk about the mean, median, mode. 
and range, and we're going to uh, obviously do this problem. But uh, what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about basic statistics, and there's a little uh, kind of uh, phrase that goes along with this. It's called the measure measures of central tendency. Okay, so the mean, median, mode, and range are what we call measures of central tendency, and there is. Uh, others, but let's just look at these numbers: three, seven, nine, and two. What's the central tendency? Like, what you know? There's something, you know. How can we kind of think of these numbers, right? Most people are would think of like an average. Well, what's the average amongst these numbers? And, and of course, if we put the two here in front because that's like then we have all the numbers here ordered from us uh, uh, least to greatest. But like, you know, what's how can we, what's what's like the center of these numbers, you know, like, how can we think about that? So central tendency is what we want to think about when we're given a set of numbers or raw data, we're always trying to draw some conclusions about, you know, the average, right? When we think about, uh, let's say home prices, okay, this house is, you know, 150,000, this house over here is 225, and this one over here is two. A hundred. This one over here is 375. You get the idea, right? So when you're given a bunch of data, we're trying to make order to, you know, we're trying to have some order to that data. We're trying to make sense of generally what's going on. Okay. So if this is a location, we want to have some descriptive overarching metrics of what's going on. And that's the measures of central tendency. So we can calculate these different things out. We can find the mean. Okay. We can find the median, we can find the mode, and we can find the range, and all these are measures of central tendency. They don't, one's, it's not like one is right and one's wrong. They're descriptions, okay? They give us, uh, they put flavor on this data so we can make sense of it, okay? And that's what we're going to be doing here, but that's, uh, you just remember, you know, when you're doing when you're calculating the mean, median, mode, and range, you know, why are you doing it? You're not doing it just to calculate a number. What we're trying to do is to try to find some sense of this data set. Okay. All right. So now let's get into the mechanics. And uh, here is our numbers, 3, 7, 9, and 2. And we'll start off with the mean. Okay. So everyone's like, oh, mean. Uh, what is that? Well, the mean is the average. Okay. So everyone kind of re hopefully remembers what the average is. The average is the mean. Okay, so what do we do uh, when we calculate the average, okay, or calculate the mean? Well, we add up the numbers, okay, so we're going to add up 3, 7, 9, and 2, 3 plus 7, plus 9, plus 2, and how many numbers do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, so we divide by the amount of numbers we have, so 3 plus 7, plus 9, plus 2, is 21, we divide that by 4, we get 5.25, all right, that is the mean. So that's one measure of central tendency. 5.25 is the average or the mean of this data set. Okay. Now, we don't have to make it any more complicated than that. Now, let's talk about the median. The median is interesting. This is used uh, a lot, especially like in economics when we're talking about home sales. They'll say the median home price <clears throat> is XYZ. Now, the median, uh, let me tell you first of all what it is. The median is what it kind of sounds like. It's like the middle, okay? Median, kind of think middle, all right? It's the middle number. So let's say I have these numbers. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Now, it's the middle number. The median is the middle number when we have things order from lowest to highest, okay? So this uh, set of numbers here is from the lowest to the highest, and what is the middle number? Well, if I look here, one, two, uh, three, four, five, so three is the, in the middle, okay? I have two numbers over here, and I have two numbers over there, and the dividing kind of mark, okay, that's in the middle is three. So these numbers here, the median is three. That's all the median is. So the first thing we have to do in the median is to make sure all of our data is from lowest to highest. So in this data set, we have the two over here. So let's put the two in front. So I have two, three, seven, and nine. And I'm like, okay, what is the middle number? Okay, well, is it three? No, three's not the middle number because that would just be a, one number here and two numbers there. That's not going to be good. And it can't be seven as well because then I run into the same situation. So 
when you have like an even amount of numbers, here this is odd, we have five numbers, uh, when you have an even numbers, what you're going to do is you're going to take the two middle numbers, in this case it's three and seven, and we're just going to find the average of the two middle numbers, right? We're going to break the tie between these two guys here. So three plus seven, uh, to find the average, okay, we have two numbers, right? We're adding up, so we're going to divide by two. So three plus seven is ten, divided by two is five, and that is the median. All right, so now if you think about our measures of central tendency, we have um, uh, the average or the mean 5.25, and five now is the median. Okay, interesting. We have, you know, five kind of seems to be kind of one, you know, it's reoccurring. Now this is 5.25 and this is five, but you know, five is like, a, you know, kind of has two votes for its measure of central tendency. And if you look at these numbers, that kind of makes sense intuitively, where right? you have a couple low numbers and you got a couple high numbers here. So now uh, let's continue on and let's talk about the mode, okay? So what is the mode? Well, uh, in this case, there is no mode. The mode, if I had this, okay, let's make the problem this way, three, seven, nine, two, and I added another three, the mode would be three, okay? So you're like, oh, okay, the mode would be three. What is the mode? It's the mode is the number that occurs the most, all right? It's a value that occurs the most. If there and there, if uh, there is no number that repeats the most, okay, then there is no mode. So here we have no mode, okay, no mode. Let's kind of quickly reinforce that with our little house housing example here. So you can see every one of these houses is the same value. But let's say I had another house over here was for two hundred thousand. This is two hundred thousand. That's two hundred thousand. Every one of these ones is different. So the mode here would be 200,000, okay? So, but sometimes there is no repeating values, but um, if there is, then that would be the mode, the, mode the, the value that repeats the most. There's only one mode or no mode. Okay, so now that brings us to the range. Now, the range is basically the span, and you're going to take your highest value, you're going to subtract it from your lowest value. That's basically what this is. And we're going to take, uh, again, our, our highest value. In this case, it's 9. And we're going to subtract away from the lowest value. That's 2. So 9 minus 2 is 7. So the range is 7. Okay, That's the span of our values. So that tells us something Okay, about our data set. All right, so we have a span of 7. Okay, And we had our, now for these numbers here, remember we had our average. Um, well, actually, we do it right here. We had our average, which was our mean, okay? Average or mean was 5.25, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just kind of quickly go, yep, 5.25. And then our median was at 5, okay? So we have 5, 5.25, and 7, and no mode. So all these numbers, you know, tell us something about this data set. They put flavor on it. They give us some sense of the information. And there's a lot of other uh, uh, measures of central tendency, things like the standard deviation, all that kind of good stuff. So as you, you know, learn uh, more about statistics, and you should, statistics is a fascinating uh, topic, um, you know, because it's such, you know, so it's so used in real life, okay? Um, but right now, the whole idea is let's just get you to understand the basics, mean, median, mode, and range. Again, I think a lot of times people confuse these two, the mean and, and the median, all right? So don't confuse those. And then, you know, obviously, uh, you know, knowing the definitions precisely of each one of these is going to help you out. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, if you felt like, oh, okay, that helped me out. Well, then help me out by smashing that like button. I would certainly appreciate that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math. My job here, you know, my passion rather, is to help you, you know, go further and farther than you can, that you thought you could go in mathematics, right? Uh, math doesn't have to be all stressful. You know, whatnot. you got to... You know, um, you just need the right information, right? You need a good teacher. You need the right 
study habits, and you need the right attitude. Right? If you, you have a mixture of all that and you're willing to put, put into work, you're going to do very, very well in mathematics. And that's always kind of been my goal as a math teacher, you know, starting off many, many years ago. All right. So, you know, what do you do with this knowledge? Well, continue to practice it. I have more additional uh, uh, videos on my YouTube channel you can check out, but my best math help will always be in my math help program. You know where to find those links. They'll be in the description. Okay. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.